We're here with some Historic on MTG Arena, playing with a new Teamer deck, trying to win the game via a combo with the Locust God. Six mana, four, four flyer. When you draw a card, you create a one, one blue and red insect creature token with flying in haste. And Sage of the Falls, which says whenever this or another non-human enters the battlefield under your control, you can draw and then discard a card. So if you have Sage of the Falls in play or the Locust God in play and play the other one, uh, you can chain, you draw a card, discard a card, that triggers the Locust God, which puts a creature into play, which triggers Sage of the Falls, you draw a card, discard a card, and it's a, an infinite loop, however many times you want, you can create 20, 30, 35, um, 1, 1 flying creatures with haste, and just kill the opponent out of nowhere. And the rest of the deck is just trying to turbo that out as quickly as possible. You've got Explore, Growth Spiral, Uro, to help you hit your land drops early, Flame Sweep and Anger of the Gods, trying to buy you some time against all the, the creature decks going around. Op just helps you filter through your deck. Uh, try not Sublime Epiphany as a, a six mana card that if we don't have the second part of the combo piece, it can really protect us. It counters things, it bounces things, counters activated abilities, copies creatures. You can copy a uh, Sage of the Falls with this and then you get to draw and discard two more cards along with the card that epiphany will draw you so i want to try that out it seems like a kind of pretty big blow up i don't know if this card is right for this deck but i want to try it out so we're going to play five games see how it goes up on that historic ladder uh best of one no sideboard for this one try and get that three and two record at least that's always the goal to win more than you lose anything else is just it's just gravy it's just extra Historic, after getting Amonkhet remastered and Jumpstart added to it, is a, a wild format now. Uh, this hand seems fine. Nothing super special. It actually doesn't have much interaction early, but we get to go like Anger of the Gods if they're a creature deck. We get to go Uro if they're not. And uh, either one's really fine. We're going to grab our mountain here. The only way grabbing the mountain is bad is if we draw exactly growth spiral but if we draw exactly growth spiral that's fine we want to make sure we have anger of the gods uh on turn three looks like our opponent is mono red mono red a deck you're definitely gonna run into on the ladder a couple lava runners we can get a nice clean flame sweep here and i think we should just go ahead and do that We could have taken a couple more, but if they have a couple removal spells, or not removal spells, but burn spells, that can become a lot of damage. And now we can just play Uro, gain some life, make an extra land drop. See what we draw? Oh, we drew Growth Spiral, so now we will pay the two life. Go ahead and play Fabled Passage. Grab. I don't think it matters exactly what we get here. Uh, island should work. Go ahead and grow the spiral. Play another Fabled Passage? Sure. I want to go ahead and crack this before I draw another card, because I think I only have a couple basic... Okay, yeah. I was afraid I didn't have any... I, I was afraid I only had one basic left, but I had more. So next turn, we get to... Well, we get to play Uro from the graveyard. So might as well go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four, five. Not too shabby against Mono Red. I feel like this game's getting out of reach for them. It depends on you know, what else they've got going on. If they have a hand full of burn spells, and then maybe they can do something, but they have no real board presence. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and play this and then play a second Uro just to, you know, draw the cards. We want to be sure to keep the one here. Let's try to 
I think it'll be on the left. But I'm not 100% sure. So I want to try to keep an eye on it. See what happens. Basically, gain a life draw a card. Perhaps put a land into play. Yes, I want to keep this one. Hopefully I kept the correct one. Alright, well there's one piece of the combo. Although I'm not sure that the combo will be necessary this game. Wizard's Lightning into Lightning Strike. So Uro went ahead and drew us some cards, gained us some life, and then gained six more life basically. Nothing wrong with that. At this point we can discard Anger of the Gods. Don't think that's something that we'll be um, messing with too much. And there's the Locust God, which should provide a uh, lethal next turn. Might get to see the combo go off. Still at 24, this should be a, a pretty guaranteed win here. Still 38 cards in the library, so... Should be fine. Go ahead and uh, play the Locust God. That triggers Sage of the Falls. We draw a card, discard a card, create a 1 1. Trigger Sage of the Falls, draw a card, discard a card. Creates a 1 1. Triggers Sage of the Falls, and the combo is assembled. So we just kind of turn through our deck real quick. Make as many 1-1 one, one flying haste locusts as we can. Go ahead and make probably like 23 of them. Pretty much irrelevant, like how many we make, given no real pressure from them. From the opponent, but you want to make slightly more than they can burn out. The only concern is decking yourself, but we have plenty of cards in our library. So many locusts. Always nice to start a video off showing off the combo and it ha having it work out really well. Had a good flame sweep. Uro drew us some cards, gained us some life. What is that, 20 of them? 21. 22. Ah, we'll make 25 of them. Right, still got 13, yeah. That's 24. And 25. Uh, no. An attack. With 25 hasty... Locusty boys. Awesome. And we go to 1-0. Well, that looked pretty good. That felt like we were on the correct side of that matchup the entire round, the entire entire game. Just a lot of card draw and not the best hand from the opponent. When we play Uro, gain 3 life, replay Uro from the graveyard, gain 3 life more... And then the opponent spends two um, deal three damage spells. It's basically gaining us 12 life. And it's just really hard, I think, for uh, for them to, to do much about that. Here we've got a nice little hand. We get to go Triome into Explore, into Uro, have Epiphany up pretty early. Don't have too many of the combo pieces, but... Now the opponent is playing Luris, so this... You know, this is a matchup where they could get off to the gates pretty quickly. Get out of the gates pretty quickly. Maybe we will regret a hand that doesn't really have much interaction. But we'll see. Croxa. Well, we can discard this explorer. Um, Arena? I need a Croxa trigger, please. There we go. So we play Crag, we explore. 
play a triome. We have one piece of the combo now. And the fun part of the combo is it does scale like a five mana card into a six mana card. I think we can go ahead and discard an Oro. We have another one to play anyways. Oh yeah, so now all we want is uh, is lands. Two lands in a row and we should win this game. Well, that one's not a land. Somewhat unfortunate. Oh, Citrus Supplier means that the, the opponent will likely get to play Croxa next turn. Oh, that's not great. That is a bit unfortunate. Don't quite have enough cards to play Uro. I don't want to flame sweep away the supplier and fill up their graveyard more. If I do flame sweep, I get to like cast our own Uro next turn. But I don't think I will. Perfect. So we'll play Sage of the Falls, draw a card, discard a card, and then next turn we have the combo, so the opponent needs to kill us this turn, or kill Sage of the Falls this turn. If the opponent plays a land in Croxa, or uh, plays their Lurus, we're going to win the game. Village right, they draw a couple cards. Play a Blood Crypt untapped. So they need to kill Sage of the Falls or Thought Seize us. We'll see what they do. They do Thought Seize us. A little unfortunate. But that's okay. We're going to have Sublime Epiphany up for whatever they try to do next turn. And, and the second that we draw a, um, a Locust God, the game is going to end. So we can attack for two here, counter whatever they play, copy Sage of the Falls, draw and discard two cards from that, and then also draw a card ourselves. Uh, so we should get to draw three cards this turn, counter their spell. Oh, Thought sees us, huh? Well, I think that's going to work. Uh, counter target spell, create a... Copy, and target player draws a card. So target creature I control, and target a player. Do not want that Thought Seize to go off. We will like to draw and discard. We can discard Flame Sweep at this point, and then draw and discard. And then we'll get to untap with another Epiphany. Like if they play Kroxa here, that's fine. We can discard our Uro. And again, the second that we draw the Locust God, the game is over. So we'll discard our Uro here. Fabled Passage, huh? Well, we'll play Rootbound Crag. We'll discard Fabled Passage when they attack with Croak Sub. Can still counter their next spell. Make another Sage of the Falls. It's going to draw us three cards. And we should be nearing the Locust God. Got a lot of draws for it. We're going to draw five cards before our next turn. We'll take three and then take six more. See what they want to do. And we will counter this Lurus. Counter target spell. Return Croxa. Create a copy. Draw a card. So return Croxa. Copy Sage of the Falls. Draw a card. Oh, they had a Bedevil. Interesting. Oh, but we just drew the Locust God off the top. Like a champion. Like a hero, Chad. Like a legend. 
and that'll do it. We're gonna make lots of little little locusty boys. Look at that little friend. Just coming to hang out a little bit. Gonna ask the opponent how their day's going. Answer is not very good. Been eaten by locusts, and we go to two and zero. Oh. Yeah, so the Sublime Epiphany, very good. We st stated at the beginning of the video that I wasn't sure how I felt about it in this deck, but it was very good there. Copying the Sages ended up working out quite well. Got the opponent to use a removal spell before we had the combo in place. That worked well. Countered Alluris. Countered something else. Yeah, countered a Thought Seize. Just all around pretty good. Uh, this hand is a little interesting. A little a little mana light. But we have Growth Spiral and Uro, so I'm going to keep it. And Interaction with Flame Sweep. Ether Spell Bomb is not a card I've seen very much of. I am very excited to see what's going on over here. Vibblethip the Lost. Oh, this must be, uh... Is this like a... A Kethis thing? Is Kethis still a deck? I'm actually unsure. I don't think it was banned. I think it was banned in, a uh, Pioneer. Let me go check. Hold on. Yeah, it's legal and historic. Okay. So, it's probably a Kethis thing. Well, next turn we're going to have uh, Sublime Epiphany up or the Locust God. A little more rough with, like, Aether Spellbomb in play, but... Oh, Narset's a huge problem. Narset is a massive problem. Yikes. Because now we can't draw extra cards. So I think we just play the Locust God. Start trying to chew through these Aether Spell Bombs. Because what we can do is end of turn bounce Narset with Sublime Epiphany. And then go off. Or just, you know, attack the Narset. That's fine. Meditate. Luckily the opponent has not provided a ton of pressure. Flood of Tears. Another Aether Spellbomb. Bounce it back. A third Aether Spellbomb. I like what the opponent's doing. I've not seen the uh, the Flood of Tears deck. So right now they'd be able to... Next turn they're going to be able to put a permanent into play. How do I want to handle this? If I play Locust God, they just go Flood and then replay Narset. So I think what I want to do is just kill their creatures. Sublime Epiphany doesn't really do much here. Yeah, this Narset and these Aether Spell Bombs really slowing us down. Another Narset. I train every day. No one is more prepared than me. I have joined. 
All right, we are turning like, oh, God's God Pharaoh statue. Interesting. I feel like that's something we have to try to counter. I don't know. No, we have enough to do what we want to do right now. If we play Locust God, they just eat their spell bomb it away. I assume they do the same thing with the the sage. But I mean. I think we gotta just start turning through them. Again, we do get to win out of no like out of close to nowhere. Omniscience. Oh, it's another flood of tears put omniscience into play. Oh, neat. Okay. Shark Typhoon. God Pharaoh statue. Okay, I think this is cool. I think we uh, officially lost, though. Because even if we play the Locust God here, they've got the Aether Spell Bomb and the Narset. We just don't have enough time. Yeah. That was pretty cool, though. I've not seen that deck. I'll have to try to see if I can recreate that one. Maybe make another video for you today or tomorrow. But we're doing one. Yeah, so the Flood of Tears deck was pretty neat. I'll have to look into that one more. What did we see? We saw Flood of Tears, God Pharaoh Statue, Narsets, Aether Spell Bombs, Omniscience, uh, Shark Typhoons. Pretty cool. Omen of the Seas, Fibble Thips. Skittering Surveyors was interesting. Uh, here we've got Growth Spiral, Uros, and Early Interaction. For like the creature decks. So I think this hand is quite good. We can hopefully eventually get into the... Like the meat of the uh, the combo. We can draw into the combo pieces. Yeah, I just want lands. That's fine. That means next turn I can go Uro and play two lands. Looks like our opponent is Bant. That should be, if we draw another land, a, um, potentially turn four Locust God, which could be pretty, pretty huge. Depending on what type of removal the opponent has. Ah, that's a tapped land. And we don't have enough to... I guess I should have opted just to see if I drew, like, Fabled Passage. Because then I could have, like, maybe played the other Uro. A little unfortunate, but that's alright. Not a bad turn. We have eight lands. Karn the Great Creator. I've been seeing a lot more Karns lately. What are you getting? God Pharaoh's statue is usually the first one they get. I don't think that's going to do much to us here. Yeah, because we have enough to pay for, like, pay the extra two. Tormod's Crypt. Oh, okay. Well, that means no Uro for us. But that's alright. We still have the Locust God. Oh, we even get to make a little 1-1. One -one, a 1-1 one -one friend. I'm not going to play that Triome, because I'm going to want to probably cycle it. So now if they grab something else with Karn, Karn has to die, so that's good. If they don't have an Exile effect, you know, even Wrath doesn't work. Alright, cool, so we killed Karn. They, of course, get to get something else here, but... 
The Locust God is a very neat card. I really liked all of the... the what was it? Hour of Devastation Gods? Oh, Perilous Fault, huh? So we're going to have a turn? We're going to have one turn to try to draw the, the Sage? So there's the Vault. Go ahead and Growth Spiral. That's not it. That's not it either. All right. Unfortunate. Yeah, Perilous Vault's pretty sweet. I forgot that card existed. So you get to exile all non-land permanents. So interestingly, one thing that they could do is not pop it now. And if they don't pop it now, we can draw Sublime. We unfortunately were unable to do so, but I will go ahead and draw a card. Oh, we did! We did draw it. We're gonna we're gonna max punish the opponent. Uh, the opponent decided to use this more as an instant, and we're gonna get to counter an activated or triggered ability. Make another locust. And we'll draw a card. So now they don't get to exile things. Incredible. So this is a good example of a situation where just because you have the ability to draw things, like do things as an instant, doesn't mean you have to. Like the opponent, we were tapped out. They could have just exiled it on their turn. Uh, instead, they let us not only draw the, the Sublime, but they also let us loot another card with the, with the Locust God, even if we didn't have it. So there's the Wrath, but the Locust God does come back to us. Does come back to say hello. Wanna recast their Uro. I am tired of that Uro animation, I'm gonna be honest with you. Alright, and here we can cast the Locust God again. We can explore. Make a little locusty friend. And attack for one. Uh, no blocks. No blocks here. We'll take our six. I know the Locust God will come back. But I would much rather have the ability to, to draw a card instead of having to replay the Locust God with the four mana ability. Ooh, another Karn. What you getting? What you getting, friend? They got Tormod's Crypt and Perilous Vault. Do they have a second Perilous Vault? God, Pharaoh Statue. That one doesn't do too much to us. That one's not one to worry too much about. Uh, sure, we will explore. Well, you really hate to see that. Go ahead and draw and discard again. Don't think we'll be casting Anger of the Gods this game. So, what do we want to do? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think we want to send three at Karn. Leave this one back. Just in case they have another card to activate God Pharaoh's statue, turn into a 6 6. And then we are threatening lethal. 
No blocks. Currently have nine. Oh, Ugin. Unfortunate. Alrighty. Well, we do get to kill Ugin with this second Locust God. Activate, make a 1-1. One, one. Kill Ugin. What a close game. I'm going to go ahead. Do I want to create an upkeep stop? No, I don't think so. I don't think we want to scry. How many cards do they have in the graveyard? Five. So one more and they can recast their Uro. Alright, so they get to recast their Uro. How many cards are in our library? We're looking for one Sage. What a good game. Let's draw. Let's start growth spiral. Draw. Let's start uh, passage. Go ahead and draw again. All right, there's Sage. Four, five, six, seven. Because next turn is all we need. We just have to, you know, survive till next turn. Two blockers. A second Ugin kills us. Maybe I should have left one, or maybe I should have left another one back. Okay. Nice simple block block. Go ahead and feel the ruin me, sure. Grab a land. Wrath. If I draw a land, I can uh, do it anyways. Yeah, so if we draw an untapped land, we can still cast both. But wow, this is getting this is getting tight. One, two. Oh no, because this is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yes, we can. Okay, the Locust God. Ah, oh, neutralized. No. Unfortunate. I think we're going to lose now. Wow, that was such a good game. Ah, we were so close on so many different different fronts. We just could not find that Sage of the Falls for far too long. I will not lose another friend. Oh, I think they had lethal. I think they had lethal here if they just tuck the Sage and turn God Pharaoh's statue into a 6-6. Six, six. I don't think it matters. Yeah, Platinum Angel will ult. Well, not necessarily, because we can bounce that, but... I think at this point... Ah, oh, the Platinum Angel is going to save him. So what do we do? We can kill both of the... Uh... Do we still have a Sublime Epiphany? Yes, we have one more, but we have no cards in hand. This is wild. So I think we have to, like, make a bunch of 1-1s. One enough to kill the Planeswalkers. And hope that we don't mill Sublime Epiphany. I think that's what it's come down to. 
Because if we mill Sublime Epiphany, I think we lose. Because we can't kill the Platinum Angel. Still good so far. Need a couple more. Oh wait, hold on. Now we can decline. Yes, now we can decline Uro. Okay. Uh, I need to stack this trigger so the Uro draw happens first. Yes, okay. Decline. Take action. Okay, now we go until we get Sublime Epiphany. Okay, there it is. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here. One, two, three, four. Here. All right. So the planeswalkers. I have a better plan next time. See what happens now. Oro's fine. We have... I mean, not quite lethal, but... Not quite infinite, I mean. But enough to be lethal, for sure. Oro has to draw a card, right? Yes. Alright. So... Yes. If they have a naturalized, we lose. Well, not necessarily now. Because now we can attack that thing, and if they block, we also have Anger of the Gods. Take. Okay, uh, one more. That's it. And then we say no. Decline. Attack with everything. Uh, decline. So if they block with Platinum Angel, okay, they did not. So, here's our chance. Bounce that. Do you have Naturalize? Boom! Oh, wow. I can't believe we won that game. That game was so good. I can't believe we found, like, the line at the end. Incredible. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, that's like, that's one of the hypest things I've ever, ever played. That was such a good game. Even when I thought I was losing, it was a good game. And now we're 3-1. and one. Let's go finish it off with a, a nice 4-1. and one. But that, that game will definitely be the highlight of the video. That game was fantastic. Let's see what we got here. We got Triome, Uro, Locust God. Yeah, that seems about good. Against Yorian, which means we shouldn't be under too much pressure early. Of course, it also means we're going to have to fight through a little bit more interaction. Uh, opt. Yeah, I think against a Yorian deck, that should be pretty good. Narset continues to be a problem for us. It really shuts off everything we're trying to do. Like, I'm going to Uro here to gain three and play another land, I guess. And to get another card in the graveyard, but it does not feel, feel good at all. 
And we also have Nicol Bolas. Oh, they're like four color control. Interesting. Non-green control. Teferi, Master of Time. I'm still kind of freaking out over that last game. I can't believe we found, like, the, the line to win. Yeah, next time they're gonna get to play Nicol Bolas, they've got Teferi going. Teferi is also really bad against the Locust God. They can just phase it out on our turn. And then other Nicol Bolas? Oh, man. We don't get to draw any more cards. We're just, like, playing another Uro to draw three. Or, I'm sorry, not draw three, uh, gain three. Yeah, that does not feel good. Just putting a card in our graveyard, gaining three life. I cannot imagine us winning this game. I like what they're doing, though. Anytime I see Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh, I'm in. I love Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh. Oh, they discarded it, though. Opponent, why you don't want to have fun? Nicol Bolas, Dragon God. Well, Flame Sweep's not really what we want here. I guess we'll exile Flame Sweep. I guess we play the Locust God. It is not looking good. Yeah, I feel like this deck just completely folds to a Narset. You know, Narset turned off both of our, or, or really all three of our Uros. Else with Conqueror's Death on the Locust God. Oof. I think the only question left of this game is how exactly are we going to lose it? I think we're going to lose it to a Nicol Bolas Dragon God ultimate here in like two turns. Because what's going to happen here? Uh, Teferi takes up to nine. On their turn, it takes up to ten. And then they, um, they take two extra turns and then Nicol Bolas just kills us. Like, we can Sublime Epiphany when that happens, I guess. And also Bounce Suppling. But they all, the opponent also has seven cards in hand. I guess six after they discard. This deck is cool. I want to find this one, too. I am all about anything that plays, you know, multiple Nickel Boluses. It's just like four color Planeswalkers. Which is kind of cool, because every time I see, like, Super Friends... Every time I see Super Friends, it's always, like, base green. So this is pretty neat. Alright, I discard an Uro, or exile an Uro, I guess. Alright. Alright. You know what? I'm going to let him have this. I'm going to let him go ahead and do it. Because, like, I know you probably don't get to ultimate Nicol Bolas Dragon God very often. And this video has had a couple really cool moments already. So let's go ahead and be on the other end of it for once. For the first time, let's be on the other end of, like, the cool thing that's happening. Let's let the opponent have their fun. So we'll finish this matchup. I, I believe it's going to last... You know, two more turns, if that. Um, and I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope you've been having a good time. I think this deck was really cool. I think it had a lot of stuff going on. I can, like, counter that, but I'm going to try to counter the, uh, the one that wins them the game, I guess. 
Although this one's going to be a problem too. I mean, they're all problems. Oh, they can even make us exile cards from our hand. What you playing? Oh, you get the Locust God? Oh, okay, and then I... Yeah, 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 okay. Then they make me exile my hand. This is a pretty rough board state, Chad. I don't think we're coming back from this one. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the combo. I think the Sublime Epiphanies put in good work. If you remember, at the beginning of the video, I discussed not knowing if Sublime Epiphany was where we wanted to be. It ended up being pretty solid as a value card in the first round, where we got to copy a couple of our, our two fives. But it flat out won us the last round by bouncing the Platinum Angel. So let me go ahead and put that three and two on. Go ahead and make it official. Congratulations to the opponent for getting to ultimate Nickel Bowl's Dragon God. That was really cool. I hope you like this deck. I'll go pull it up real quick one more time. Uh, arena, please. Down below will be the deck list and the in the description, as well as the link to the stream. We stream Magic on Fridays. If you like what you see, come hang out over at twitch.tv slash Synthetica. And I will catch you all next time. Thank you for watching.